Hey, welcome back to Fire and Water Cooking. I'm Darren, of course, and today, boy, it's that time of year again. It's time for the cheap prime rib roast or rib roasts from the grocery store for Christmas. $6.99 a pound. This one here, I just told them, I went back to the meat, meat department and said, just give me a whole one. Don't even bother cutting it up. And that's what they did. $153 right here, 21.88 pounds including bones and all the fat. I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna trim this up and we're gonna use the JVR back pouches to uh, freeze it up. I got several different ones, I'm gonna show you those. I'll be right back. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling from fire and water. Alright guys, like I said, I've done a few of these videos, I try to do one every year, just to kind of show you, uh, you should load these up, especially if you've got a freezer, like I do. Uh, when these go on sale, just buy as many as you can. I, like I said, I like to go ahead and uh, go, just right, go right back to the meat department and say, just get me a whole one. Um, and then I'll, because sometimes they'll cut them up into smaller roasts and they'll tell you only two per person. But, trick is, if you go back and get a full one, that's only one, so you can get two full ones. So don't get the ones that they cut up and put in the display case. Go back to the meat department, ask them to give you a whole one in the cryo pack. So what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna just actually get this out. I've actually let this sit in my outdoor refrigerator for about a week, letting it wet age a little bit. Now you can actually dry age these if you wanted to. Um, in your dry aging bags from Umai or whoever you get them from. Or if you have a dry ager, you can do that as well. People do that all the time. So like I said, when I get this um, in the cryo pack without it being cut up or anything, there's no string on it already. So I don't like them with the string on them. And I don't like them when they cut the bones off because I want to butcher this up myself so I can cut it up many different ways. And like I said, one of the things I like to do with these is cut them up into uh, roasts. And sometimes I will take the bones and just use them for uh, beef ribs. Just your plain uh, beef back ribs come from is right here behind the uh, rib roast. So as you can see, it's got a good fat cap on the front here. And we're gonna go ahead and trim some of this off really simple just any big bits of hard fat I like to trim off I don't like to trim off a lot of the meat at all guys I think that's about it for that now I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut these into some bigger cowboy steaks so I'll be right back and see if we can get this thing butchered up a little more all right guys so like I said I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn these into some cowboy steaks some really thick ones um, just because that's what I want to do with this I've done some others where I've cut the bones off and just made it into regular ribeye steaks I've done some like I said where I've turned it into uh, uh, the ribeye cap steaks and all that but I'm just gonna actually try to find right in between these bones here um, you're gonna see there's like a little chine bones here on top you kind of want to avoid those kind of go in between I'm just gonna go ahead and cut all the way through with a big old knife here just make sure you're not hitting any bone just make sure you're getting all the way through and if you wanted to, you could trim it up just a little bit more once you get it off. Now this here is a really big thick one. I might trim this up just a little bit more and just trim down some on this side just to uh, make it a little bit smaller and just maybe take some of this trim and use it for kebabs or something like that. But I went all the way up against this other bone over here. So what I'm going to do is try to go up against each bone all the way over 
as far as I can so I can have these pretty thick. Now you can cake them just you know about an inch thick or an inch and a half thick if you want. I like mine a little bit thicker because I'm going to sous vide them, make sure they're cooked all the way through at a perfect temperature. So I like mine a little bit thicker, but you can make these as thick or as thin as you want to. Just um, remember you got that bone in there, and that's why you want to do it when you cut it. You want the bones facing you, so you know where to actually run your knife when you're cutting this up. So like I said, I'm going to go around that chine bone. You can actually pull those chine bones out. You can kind of dig them out if you wanted to. They're kind of buried in there. You don't want to break your knife doing it though. But you can kind of just go right around them. And that's what I'm going to do here. Just go right around it. There we go. Because I want this thick. Same thing. Just kind of move or wiggle your knife so it gets right around it. Get it all the way through. And there's my second one. That one's a little bit thinner than the first one, but. Got that bone in there. Got that big thick piece of fat. And that's perfect. I'm going to do the same thing over here on the next one. Now, like I said, you can do this with all of it, or you can take part of it and do uh, just the regular roast. So I might just uh, go ahead and take three or four of these off and then keep the rest of it as a roast and keep the bones on and that's how we'll cook it um, maybe uh, for New Year's Day. Alright guys, now that I got these cut up into cowboy steaks, I'm going to take my back pouches here from JVR and we're going to go ahead and package them up so we can freeze them and then sous vide them later. So the back pouches come in several different sizes and different thicknesses. You can get them from uh, JVR online and the link below. I'm going to use my black garlic and coffee seasoning and season these up and then we're going to put them in these chamber sealer bags from JVR on the back pouches and we're going to seal them up and then freeze them and that's going to let us take these right out of the freezer and put them in the sous vide to get them cooked up perfect so I got my four mil back pouches here and we're going to put two big thick cowboy steaks in each one I'm going to show you how we're going to seal them up in just a minute all right, guys, so here's my JVR VAC 100. One of my bags of these cowboy steaks in here. With my VAC pouch. Fits in there just right. So the VAC pouches come in all different sizes and shapes. Uh, JVR guarantees their quality. All you do, shut it down. Let it... Remove all the air out of the chamber and vacuum it up. Super simple. So check out the VAC 100 and the VAC pouches from JVR. And there you go guys, once it gets all vacuumed up, check it out. Perfect seal, super tight, ready to go in the freezer. And then from the freezer right into the sous vide. Not cooking them today, guys, but thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you check out the JVR VAC 100 and the VAC uh, pouches from JVR. And check out my fire and water cooking edible creations, seasonings, and sauces. And I'll be back on the next one.